Hello everybody, my name is Maya Joy and in today's video I am going to be speaking about fasting as a spiritual practice and I wanted to make this video today because I am currently fasting. I've been doing so off and on at various points throughout 2019 and when I'm fasting I always go out looking for content about fasting to help inspire me and I've realized that there aren't really many videos from just regular people like you and me talking about their experience with fasting or talking about fasting for spiritual reasons. So I really wanted to make a video that other people can discover to help support them in their fasting journey. As I'm filming this, I've been fasting for about 46 hours to celebrate and welcome in the new moon in Gemini this month. And I am feeling really great and I'm feeling really connected to my soul. Fasting is something that has really, really helped me to deepen my spiritual practice. And if it's something that you're interested in as well, keep watching because in this video, I'm going to be talking about the history of fasting for spiritual and religious reasons. I'm also going to be talking about the reasons that people have fasted throughout time, what counts as fasting, my experience with fasting, and some benefits that I have noticed both spiritually and physically while I'm fasting. And then finally, I'm going to talk about when to fast and why I fast um, in alignment with the lunar cycles. So here in modern times, we don't fast very often. You know, most people eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and some people even eat, you know, five, six, or seven times a day, or just graze all day. And this is actually really unusual because fasting, going time periods without consuming any food, historically was really a part of our human history. And fasting is something that has been practiced by almost every religious tradition. It's a part of Islam. It's a part of Christianity. It's a part of Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism. Almost all of our world's major religions have practiced fasting as a way to bring themselves closer to God. For example, Buddhists fast to help free their mind, and some Tibetan monks also fast as a way to aid in their yoga practice. As many of us know, Catholics also fast, and they do this as a way to follow Jesus' example. Catholics also fast to help sort of break bad habits and to overcome their lower passions and and they also fast to increase their thankfulness. I think when we're constantly consuming, 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 it can be really easy to forget how lucky that we are to even have food, let alone like delicious food that nourishes our body. I mean, that wasn't always the case throughout our human history. And when we sort of pause and we don't consume food for a while or we don't consume certain foods, I think it can really help us to regain a sense of reverence for eating and regain a sense of reverence for the abundance that's available to us on this planet. So that's part of the reasons why Catholics fast. And Catholics also fast to create more room in their life for God. And typically the time that Catholics fast is during Lent. And traditionally, Lent was a time where Catholics would abstain from all animal products. So basically, they were following, during Lent, they were following a vegan diet. In the modern day, most Catholics will abstain from eating meat during Lent, and many of them will also give up some sort of other luxury in their life as well. So a lot of, think of us think of fasting as being abstaining from food, but there are also forms of fasting that go beyond food. So for example, some Catholics might give up things like social media, for example. Yes, a lot of them might give up um, chocolate or Starbucks, but some give up social media or television. Really, fasting as a 
spiritual practice, it can be about giving up anything that sort of stands in between you and your soul or in between you and a higher power. Christians throughout the world, of course, recognize the Bible as their holy book. And the Bible mentions fasting many times, including in the very first book of the Bible in Genesis in chapter two. I believe this is the first mention of fasting, and it is actually when God tells Adam and Eve to abstain from eating the forbidden fruit. So in a way, that is a form of fasting, and I read that fasting is mentioned in the Bible 77 times. And of course, Jesus fasted at several times in his life as well. Muslims, of course, are also known for fasting. They fast from sun up to sun down during Ramadan. And actually, this year, Ramadan began on May 5th, and it's going to be ending on the day that this video comes out on June 4th. And so on June 4th, if you're watching this around sundown, then this is an amazingly happy time for many people who practice Islam because this is when they will be breaking their Ramadan fast. Ramadan is actually determined by the lunar calendar, so it's actually a type of lunar fasting. Muslims are fasting to follow the example of their prophet, the prophet Muhammad. Fasting during Ramadan means not only abstaining from food and drink during the day, but it also means abstaining from speaking down to others, speaking in unholy language, abstaining from forms of physical intimacy. And many Muslims don't only fast during Ramadan, but some also fast as often as twice a week. Some Muslims fast every Monday and every Thursday as a way to bring them closer to God. And some of you may know as well that followers of Judaism also recognize seven fasting days on their calendar, including Yom Kippur, which occurs in September and is their day of atonement. So in this instance, fasting aids in repentance and awakening and also self-reflection. So fasting in the realm of Judaism, it's seen as a great equalizer that brings followers closer to one another, but also that brings them closer to those who might be less fortunate to those who live lives of deprivation or those who have to go hungry. And so it's almost seen as a way to have greater compassion for those who go without. Fasting is also practiced in Hinduism and sometimes as a form of Vedic sacrifice to overcome adversity or to please deities or even to fulfill wishes. It's sort of magical in that sense. And sometimes within Hinduism and in India, fasting can be used as a punishment for those who break tradition or who break religious or spiritual laws or commit sins. So as you guys can see, there's a huge history of fasting throughout the world, and there's also many other different religions and spiritual circles who use fasting, but these are just a couple that I wanted to share with you. So when we look as a whole at reasons why people fast, spiritual reasons why they fast, there's sort of five that really stick out to me. So one is that fasting is seen throughout these different religious traditions as a way to refocus priorities. So for a time period, maybe as short as one day or even time periods as long as, you know, 30 or 40 days, there's something about abstaining from food. There's something about not eating that sort of frees up time and energy to go within. And a lot of times when people are fasting for spiritual reasons, they take the time and energy that they would put into eating and instead put it into prayer or put it into meditation or put it into reading a holy book 
or things like this. And it kind of causes us to sort of slow down and reprioritize our spiritual life. I think there's really something to this idea that when we're in our purest form, when we're not physically embodied, but when we are in the higher realms, one of the major differences is that in the higher realms, in the heavens, we don't eat, at least not in the way that we do here. We don't need to eat. And I think that when we take a pause and we stop consuming food and we stop eating, it kind of somehow sparks something in our subconscious. I think it sparks a remembrance of that, a remembrance of what it's like to be free of the more sort of animalistic part of our nature. Do you know what I mean? Of the real, the biological constraints of our being. Another reason why people fast throughout the world is for purification. So there's an acknowledgement that not everything that we put in our body is pure. And one sort of thread that I noticed throughout the various religions is that for a lot of them, fasting means at the very least removing animal products, especially animal flesh, especially animal meat, but a lot of times also eggs and milk and things like that. And that has been seen as a form of fasting throughout human history. History. It's the idea of putting into our body only that which is pure and allowing our body to become purified for a time or even becoming spiritually purified. Fasting is often used in times when we are asking to be forgiven of our sins or when we're trying to overcome parts of our nature that go against what we would prefer or that are sinful. Fasting is also often used as a way to increase mindfulness. And I can say in this moment, you know, for me that that is definitely the case. At first, when you fast and you go without food, you might just feel hungry and think about food a lot. But eventually, after enough time has passed, it sort of brings your body into an altered state. And actually, your mind kind of opens up. And it's a little hard to describe, but I definitely understand why a lot of monks and a lot of yogis and a lot of priests and things, why they do go without eating because it seems to raise the consciousness. It seems to really raise consciousness. Another reason that people fast throughout the world is to honor tradition. It's something that connects us as modern day humans with humans of the past, right? It's like a time, you know, if you think of something like Ramadan, it's such an ancient practice. You know, it goes back to the beginning of Islam. And so modern Muslims, when they're fasting during Ramadan, it's like they are slowing down and they're connecting with all of those other Muslims who went before them who also fasted during that time. And I feel like it's a way to stay in touch with our humanity when so much of the world is speeding up and there's all these demands now that there weren't in the past. I mean, you can literally be constantly distracted with your smartphone or tablets or computers, like if we don't intentionally decide to slow down, right, maybe we never will. And maybe our whole life will just go, go on beyond us. So yeah, there is something that kind of helps us to honor the tradition of our species that can help us to feel more human, but also help us to connect with a sense of timelessness, with a sense of, it's almost like when you're fasting and you have that experience of feeling a bit closer to God or source or creator, you know that you're having the same experience that humans also had 2,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago. And there's something really nice about that. There's something really nice about that. And then sort of the fifth reason why it seems a lot of people fast throughout the world is to increase their discipline. It can be easy to lose our sense of discipline in the modern era again because everything that we want is always right at our fingertips. I mean, literally, 
if you want something, almost anything, it's like you can go on Amazon and you can order it and it's there the next day and there's vending machines everywhere and there's sugar everywhere and there's caffeine everywhere and it's like we're constantly going and getting our fix. That can be a wonderful thing at times, but it can also mean that we're never really grounded and that we're, we can sort of feel like we're losing control and we're just going from one, you know, latte to, you know, the next or one hit of sugar to the next hit of sugar. But when you fast and you pause and you step back, it gives you a sense of discipline that lasts not only during the fast, but it also lasts beyond the fast. Well, as was mentioned in the Catholic tradition, it can help people to overcome their lower passions. You know, there are sort of addictive tendencies, I think, within all of us. And we're sort of hardwired as human beings to crave sugar and to crave fat and to crave those things which give us pleasure. But if we don't keep them in check, that so the sort of animalistic parts of our nature can kind of take over and our life can be constantly about consumption. And so fasting can be a way to increase our discipline. So my experience with fasting has been something that has evolved for me over the past five years, but especially over the past three years. So for me, I actually do psychic readings and intuitive advising. I realized, you know, as soon as I started doing readings full time that I just naturally wanted to do my readings in a fasting state, you know? I just, it just happened very, very naturally where I would say, you know what, like I'll wake up in the morning and I'll do my readings because I feel so clear when I haven't eaten for a while and then once I'm finished, then I will eat lunch. So at first I just started, sort of skipped breakfast and worked in the morning and then I would have lunch. And then as time went by, my business got busier. I started having more clients, more readings. And so that my work would take longer. And so I would fast longer. And so then I stopped eating breakfast and I stopped eating lunch. And eventually I sort of increased my fast to the extent that now I eat what is often referred to as the OMAD diet. But basically, most days, especially work days, I will just eat once a day. So all throughout the day, I'm in a fasted state. And it really does help me to feel very, very clear. But it's only recently that I started practicing fasts in accordance with the lunar cycle. So my first lunar fast this year happened during the eclipse, the the lunar eclipse, which was on January 20th. At the time, I was feeling pretty sick. I was feeling really sick. I was feeling down. It was my Saturn return. And I kept like reading about the eclipse and sort of what it meant for us. And I saw so many mentions that throughout history, people were really superstitious about eating during the eclipse, that they thought that something strange, like a sort of putrefaction would happen to the food. Because during a lunar eclipse, we basically go through all 28 stages of the moon cycle in a matter of hours and our bodies are in sync with the moon cycle like the moon cycle changes like the fluid levels and things in our body and the mitochondria and things like that and so when the moon rapidly shifts it's thought that it might create a more rapid decomposition of matter in our bodies or somehow that the food wouldn't be digested in the same way. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I just felt compelled at that time to try fasting during the eclipse. So that was my first longer fast, and it was for about 30 hours. So when I would normally have my big feast, my big dinner at the end of the day, I just, I didn't eat because the eclipse was happening right at that time. It was a very good experience. (laughs) That was my first like longer fast and I just, I felt the eclipse happening and I felt like this transcendent part of me. It raised my consciousness and I just felt very, very connected to the celestial happenings and very aware of what was being eclipsed out of my life. And then some time passed, I think a moon cycle or two fasted. And then again, it was like I felt drawn to try fasting again 
during the full moon as a way of recognizing and tuning into the energies that were available at that time. And then since then, I've been fasting during every full moon. And now, because I really enjoy it so much and because it connects me to my soul so much, I'm also adding in fasting during the new moon. So this new moon here in June is my first time fasting during the new moon. And actually, I think this has been an even better experience than fasting during the full moon. So you might be wondering kind of what counts as fasting or what do I mean by a fast? I think that a lot of things can count as a fast. For me, when I say that I am fasting, what I mean is that I am abstaining from all food. And for me, my fasts usually last about 48 hours. And the reason that I do that is because, well, actually a couple of reasons. So one is that on a day-to-day basis, I'm fasting for about 22 hours. So if I just fast for 24 hours or something, it's not really any different than my usual amount of fasting. These fasts that I do, these lunar fasts, are totally different than the OMAD fasting that I'm doing or one meal a day. Because it's really after about 30 hours that the spiritual benefits of the fast kick in for me or that I really start to feel transcendent. And so I'm getting something much, much more out of fasting for about 48 hours, 44 to 48 hours, than I would out of fasting 24 hours. So for me, I go without food for 40 hours. But during this time, of course, I do consume liquids um, like mineral water, lemon water, all different types of herbal teas. And sometimes, just depending, I'll have like decaf coffee. I always consume electrolyte drops or some sort of electrolyte supplements or things like that. I think that's really important to make sure that your body stays in balance during the fast. And occasionally, if I get really hungry, I'll have like seltzer water or I'll have a Zevia or something like that because those can be kind of filling in a way. Um, During my fasts, I do also take herbs and supplements, especially those that have spiritual benefit. So for me, that includes rhodiola, haritake, and punarnava. Um, But I don't take vitamins. I don't take like my vitamins because I don't think that they're very well absorbed when you're not eating food. I think that fasting doesn't have to mean that you don't eat anything. I think fasting can be any form of discipline that you practice with food for a spiritual benefit. I think that it's the focus on purifying our diet that actually gives us the benefit, the sense of pride, the sense of spiritual purification. This could look different for different people. So for a lot of people throughout the world, when they're fasting, it means that they are just consuming liquids. Now for me, I usually just keep it to like zero calorie liquids like tea and water and maybe decaf coffee. But for some people, fasting is best for them just consuming liquids in general. So maybe they have juice, you know, juice fast. Are, are pretty common. Maybe they have tea and they have juice. Maybe some people even have milk or, you know, just liquid. Another common form of fasting is liquids plus soups and smoothies. And that's a way to kind of ease the pressure on your body to have things that are really easy to digest, high fruits, high vegetables. So that's a wonderful way to fast as well. Some people fast by focusing on just a specific food or limiting to very sort of mundane foods. So sort of you're still feeding your body, but maybe taking away the sort of more addictive foods or the foods that are just for pleasure. And when I think of that form of fasting, I think of my mother law because she practices fasting and when she does she just usually has pita bread and maybe some hummus and maybe some lentils but those are really the only foods that she eats and that really works for her. 
Um, another form of fasting could be following a raw food diet during times of spiritual significance or celestial happenings. Or, like I said, you know, following a vegan diet is really common as a form of fasting and purifying the diet throughout history. Another way that you could have greater sanctity with food is following a whole foods diet during fasting times like full moons, new moons, or other dates of spiritual significance, or even you know, to recognize these important times, you could simply fast by eliminating, say, sugar, caffeine, or food chemicals, but still otherwise eating um, a regular diet. So I think all of those are really great ways to fast. And I think that if you're thinking about doing a fast, it's probably better to start small unless you're really feeling compelled with deep from deep within to do a longer fast. But I think it can be great to start by fasting, maybe just fasting, let's say that you want to recognize a new moon or a full moon, maybe look at the time of that moon and maybe just fast, say, four hours before and four hours after, or something like that, and then extend it over time. And also be aware that fasting is really not recommended for certain groups of individuals, including children, um, especially young children that haven't gone through puberty yet because they really need the nutrition. Fasting is also generally not recommended for pregnant women, and it's also not recommended for the elderly or those who are suffering with chronic illnesses. And although it's debatable, in some spiritual traditions, women who are menstruating are also not encouraged to fast. So I wanted to share with you some of the benefits that I receive when I'm fasting and sort of why I continue to do it. So first, fasting calms me. Like it calms me a great deal. It calms my nervous system. And as many of you are, I'm sure, I am also an empath. And I'm so sensitive to the foods that I put into my body. And a lot of times I just feel in general very overstimulated by life. And so fasting, it kind of causes me to slow down and it gives me a profound sense of calm that I really enjoy. I also fast, as I said, because it strengthens my connection to spirit. I can't say entirely why that happens, but I think it's obvious from observing all the different religions that fast that it does bring us closer to God. And that's a wonderful feeling. It's such a wonderful feeling, as a matter of fact, that I wish that I could always be fasted. But obviously, as human beings, we can't, we can't do that. We must eat for our bodies to survive. But like in this moment, having been fasted for 46 hours or so, I feel so wonderful. I feel so connected. Like I I never want it to end. It's such a good feeling. I also fast as a way to reprioritize my life. This is really, really, really key. I can get really busy, you know, throughout the lunar cycle. And some days I have so much on my to-do list and all day I'm just going through my to-do list and I'm never really pausing for reflection. And when I'm fasting, these are the days during the month where I actually take time for writing or I take time to make videos like this one or I take time for for reading or for meditation or for quietness. And I almost think if I wasn't fasting, maybe I would not be taking the time. So fasting is a time to reprioritize your spiritual life and whatever it is that you do to connect you with your soul, to connect you with God, to connect you with spirit, you can do those things in greater abundance during the times that you're fasting. And I think that's one of the best things about it. You know, all that time that you spend cooking, cleaning up, eating, you just replace that time with things which deeply nourish and feed your soul. I also fast because it helps me to honor and recognize the celestial shifts that are occurring. It's a way for me to really tune into the energies. Because I'm fasting during the full moon and the new moon, it means I'm never going to miss those dates. You know, there's never going to be a month that goes by where I forget that it's happening. And so in that way, I think it helps me to better serve my clients and better serve all of you. I also fast as a way to understand my inner priorities. It can be really easy for me to become wrapped up in my mind's priorities or my mental priorities, things that I need to do in the material world, and I can forget or lose touch with what my soul really needs at any given time. So when I'm fasting, I use it as a time to listen 
to listen to my higher self, to listen to my inner voice and find out what that part of me needs. Fasting for me, it also helps me to ground. It helps me to connect with the seasons and it helps me to feel that time is slowing. That might sound strange, but often I feel so rushed and I feel so flurried. And when I'm fasting, I feel like time slows down. It just brings me to a sense of presence in the now moment. So it re, it sort of reframes my experience of time in a way that I enjoy. And kind of the final sort of spiritual reason why I fast is because it connects me with a sort of monastic rhythm that I really crave for. Maybe at some point in my life, I'll actually go and live in a monastery. That's something that I really long for. I almost live a monastic type of life, even though I'm part of the regular world at this time. But so much of my life is devoted to connecting to spirit and to different routines that help to foster enlightened states. I don't think I'd fast as much if it wasn't for the work that I do, if I didn't do work that was explicitly spiritual and healing in nature. And yet I do, and I enjoy feeling connected in that way. Now, there are also physical reasons why I engage in fasting, and this is a big part of it as well. As some of you may know, I do suffer with seizures, and when I'm fasting, it's one of the only times that I have total relief from seizures. I, I experience a lot of seizures in the temporal lobe region of my brain, which sometimes do bring about mystical experiences, but sometimes bring about you know, a lot of suffering, a lot of emotional suffering or a lot of difficult memories and it can vary. But when I'm fasting, it relieves that pressure on my brain and I don't have seizures, which is incredible. I also find that, especially during the full moon, fasting helps my body to be better balanced. So during the full moon, it's not uncommon for me. I have a very sensitive body. It's not uncommon for me to gain um, even 10 and sometimes even 15 pounds of water weight during the full moon, especially if I'm eating salt and I'm consuming a lot of food. And so I find that fasting helps me release that fluid from my body and it gives my body great relief to fast during the full moon. I also fast because it helps to improve my digestion. So because I eat the OMA diet and I really eat huge a huge meal every evening, that's my typical way of eating, sometimes my digestion can slow down or it can put a lot of pressure on my body having to digest such huge amounts of food each and every day. So fasting gives my digestion a break and it helps me to digest any foods that might have accumulated within my system. And fasting also, physically speaking, it helps me be aware of the dietary shifts that my body needs. So I find that my body needs a lot of changes throughout different seasons. And it can be easy, again, to get into certain patterns of eating. But when I'm fasting and I go a couple of days without eating, during that time, I'm able to listen into my body and I'm able to feel more into what types of foods my body's craving or my body needs for balance at that time. So twice a month I'm able to do this and that means that I'm able to eat more seasonally and I'm able to honor the foods that my body needs at any given time. Yes, I could do this even if I wasn't fasting, but I find that it's when I'm fasting that I get the greatest clarity about what my body needs. Fasting, I think, can be an amazing spiritual practice no matter when we do it. For me, I like fasting during the full moons and the new moons because it allows me to observe the spiritual cycles that are occurring. So basically, fasting during the new moon, it allows me to take a moment of reflection to see that new energy that is wishing to emerge in my life, to slow down enough to recognize what it is that is wishing to be born through my experience. And during the full moon, I'm able to slow down as a result of fasting enough to see 
how that energy has manifested and to kind of slow down enough to receive the answers to my prayers and to recognize that I'm receiving them. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes we can get so busy that we don't even realize when our prayers are answered or when our manifestations come to fruition. So I just feel that these two times of the month are a great time to fast as it really increases my sense of reverence. And I just like it. When we talk about fasting, I think it's important to remember that fasting is sort of one side of the coin, but feasting is the other side of the coin. And so that's another reason why I like fasting, because at a certain point, like I said, after about 30 hours or so, I start to feel bliss. I love fasting during like the full moon or during the new moon because what it does is it also creates a sense of celebration once the fast is over. So then I get to have like a huge meal of all the foods that I have been craving or that I know that my body needs. And so it's it creates in a way a feast like an, I have a new moon fast every month and a full moon fast every month, but I also have a new moon feast every month. And a full moon feast every month. And those are such jovial times of celebration for me and abundance. And I really love that part of fasting as well. So you guys, this has been so much longer than I thought it was going to be, but huh, I hope that you have enjoyed this video on fasting. And if you do decide to try a fast, many blessings to you. I hope that it brings you closer in alignment with your soul and helps you to feel a sense of love and a sense of connection to whatever higher power that it is that you believe in. And I hope it also blesses your physical body with wonderful purification and healing as well. So thank you all for stopping by today and for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to come back any Tuesday or Friday for more videos here on the Maya's Dream channel. So thank you again and namaste. Bye.